Well, once again, it looks like manufacturers think that the consumers exist just to give them their money and don't ask any questions or do anything, even don't unbox their products. So today we will be looking at good, bad and ugly of the manufacturers that produce products for smart home. We'll start in a couple of seconds. The idea for this video popped up when once again we had a bit of drama with the manufacturer doing cease and desist on a private repository where somebody has built integration for Home Assistant. It all started on the January 16th and instead of me doing a post on the new video that was released just that day, I decided to go all out on the hire for yeah, their cease and desist letter. But this is not the first nor will be the last time that the company has turned against its customers. Things are not always black and white and that's why I will not be talking about hire until later in the video. But we'll start with what's happened in the last 365 days with the manufacturers and their relation with the end users. A couple of months ago or in October of 2023 we had Mazda Gate or removal of Mazda Connected Services Integration. As it says, they were informed that an open source contributor received a cease and desist letter from Mazda North Europe Operations Mazda, regarding his library to connect with Mazda services. While we as end users have our rights, also manufacturers have their own rights. In this case it looks like Mazda decided that whatever the developer was doing was against their terms and conditions, they were hacking their libraries, connections and allowing us Home Assistant users to pull data from Mazda web services up in our Home Assistant, which depending on the country where you live may or may not be the issue. But there is one big question here. Should you as a consumer that has purchased a product because car is a product, be allowed to access data from your own product. This is the catch here. While I do understand that the manufacturers have to spend money to have the services up and running in a cloud so consumers can pull data, and if they are using official app, they also have a tracking information in that app, and they can decide what functionality will be added to that app, they can pull the ads, they can try to sell other services. On the other hand, I'm not that keen or, to be honest, I'm really hating the idea of company pulling data from users and remember vehicles, for example, are full of data that then those same manufacturers either sell, resell to third parties or to you when you go to service intervals. Or for example, they don't allow you warranty because they pulled some data from the system that said that you were driving above the speed limit or the engine was throttled too high or something like that. So they can do whatever they want with the data that is actually yours. Data from your device, your vehicle, your home, your watch, your mobile phone and you as a consumer do not have a single right on that. Yes, that's what they think, but actually that's not true. You have much bigger power than the Mazda has. Your power is to not buy or use their products. And the only tool we as a consumers have is actually to boycott companies such as this one that decides that once again their revenue streams are much more important than your right to know what's happening with the product you bought. Remember, this is the product that you bought and that you own. And that data should actually be your data that Mazda has, for example in this case, no access to until or if you allow it to have. Then just a month later we had Chamberlain Group with MyQ Gate. They have decided that although this product is installed at your home, although this is your product that you purchased, well it's like a small embassy inside your home and they have all rights to control it or to allow you access to it or not. They have blocked access to third parties. Just imagine that in the future you buy a fridge, you install the fridge, and that they decide that, for example, you cannot have stored meat in there because they all turn vegetarian. Again, this is not a black and white story. I do understand that those companies have to pay for those services and that, for example, if integration is not done correctly, that integration can have too many pulls or pushes to that service and that can 
for example, increase the cost of using those services in the cloud. And since they are companies, everything there is revolving around revenue or costs. Or to put it bluntly, profits. In November, they released that they will block access, they will not allow access, there were a lot of pleas from end users trying to plea with them to work with Home Assistant to try to find some middle ground, but they decided that the profit they are making out of the services they are providing with the apps they have are good enough for them and, and they don't care about you as an end user. For the MyQ, there is a workaround. There are a couple of devices that you can go out and buy. For example, this one here that will allow you to hook up to your device and still control it with Home Assistant without needing to give any extra money to MyQ. But for me, this is not a solution. Same with Mazda. What if I, for example, bought Mazda because I was able to pull information in Home Assistant? I wouldn't go out tomorrow and sell the car because I need the car. So I would probably keep it and keep using it. But that would also be my last Mazda that I ever bought. Same thing goes for the MyQ. Because I bought, I invested in the system. It's not like I will be throwing it out, ripping it out of my house or garage, and then just buying something else. And there are alternatives. But if you are looking for a vehicle, don't go Mazda way. If you are looking for a garage door opener, don't go MyQ way. But there are also some other companies that are still part of the Home Assistant. Actually, they were. They will not be in the future. That I simply do not know why anybody would be using. One of them is Life360. And by the way, Life360 has also purchased Style. While those are still two separate companies, they have two separate terms and conditions, and what point they could legally bind, and the same thing that applies to Life360 would also apply to Tile. So what's the catch with Life360? Life360, of course, is a once again commercial company. They have a free product, they have subscription product. If you are using free product, then you are not buying for the service, that means that actually you are service. Remember that there always has to be financial transaction. If you are using service for free, then actually your privacy and your data are part of your signed contract with the devil. I'm not saying that Live360 is a devil here, but they've just found a model where they can pull the data from the users, where they are, what they are doing, not exactly what they are doing, but based on their location and behavior and movement of the data, they can sell that data to third parties. And this was made public and there was a lot of rage on Live360, but still we have Home Assistant users using that same service, which I really do not know why, but okay, I guess if you are okay with that, for your data to be sold around, where you are moving, where your kids are moving, pets are moving, family members are moving around, that's your call, that's not my call. But the biggest issue here is that they have right to sell your data to third parties. They did nicely say that they will limit its sale of location data, whatever limiting the sale of location data actually is, but on the other hand, they don't want you to be using your own location data. This is a location service, and Home Assistant integration allows you to pull data. For example, your kid has a mobile phone with the Live360 app, and then in Home Assistant, you can see where your kid is. Well, they decided that you can do that only in their official app, and if you want to pull that data in Home Assistant, you are not allowed because this is a third-party app. They can sell your data to third parties, but you yourself cannot use your privacy and location-based data. Yeah, doesn't seem right. And by the looks of it, this will be the end of Light360 in some form in Home Assistant. Then, three weeks ago, we had this post from Polos, which I will just read the last two lines. It's time to look for alternatives, like the Home Assistant app itself, but our issue tracker is not the right place for that. Please use the community forums, Discord or Reddit to find alternatives to Live360. And this issue has been closed with won't fix. In the long run, this means that the Live360 will be removed as integration from Home Assistant. If you're asking me, good riddance, I don't like any company and I have nothing personal against Live360 here, I just cannot stand any company that is actually selling my privacy data, my location data, but on the other hand is blocking my access to that same data that they are selling to third parties. Now back to the higher group. 
Again, things are not always black and white. While we had Mazda US doing cease and desist. Here in this case, for example, Hire Group US has decided that it has nothing against open source and they are not the ones doing this. Actually, this is the European part of the company and yes, Hire is a Chinese company, but it's also owner of a lot of other brands, for example, Candy, Hover, GE Appliances and some others. But this is also where you as an end user come into play. Since there was a lot of backlash on all platforms ranging from YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, emails to the company, etc. This announcement that the project will be taken down has a new update. This is the answer from Hire. I will not be going into the original letter. I will not be going into the answer that was received, but things are slowly progressing. If you want to check everything out, it looks like Hire has reached out or the author was able to reach out to Hire and they have started talking together to see how they can do a unofficial official integration where on the one side they will protect their intellectual property, but also the cost of the services they are providing in the cloud. And on the other side, we as end users may get unofficial official integration in Home Assistant. On the GitHub, and I will be leaving a link to GitHub, you may read all the information about this issue, at what current state it is, and what are the next steps. Of course, these are not the only companies, but they are just select few in the recent months that have popped up in the community. There are also other companies that are putting paywalls for everybody that is using their product to access the API data. If I'm not mistaken, Ring is one of them that requires you to have a monthly subscription, which was previously not necessary, now you have to pay them. But I don't want to end the video here, although I'm risking this video to be a bit too long. There are also some bright companies that have to be mentioned, because on one side we may have something that Paul Hibbert calls uh, corporate greed, for example. On the other side, we have companies that work with Home Assistant and that try to improve them either directly or through their own employees. And yes, here I'm talking about Works with Home Assistant program, which is a free program to join for any company that wants to join. There are a couple of areas for each of the company that wants to join and to help Home Assistant or open source community, such as Works via Matter, Works via Z-Wave, Works via Zigbee, Works via Bluetooth, but also Works locally with Home Assistant and Works via the cloud with Home Assistant. Companies that join this program work together with Home Assistant devs or Nabucasa devs to improve the integration, to maintain the integration, but also to have the smoothest and the best possible experience for the users that did decide to invest in their products inside Home Assistant. Let's look at all the companies that are officially part of the Works with Home Assistant program. The list is available here, but also just a day or two ago, the official list is also available via the integrations page. If you go to Home Assistant page, previously you had featured companies that featured a couple of companies. Now we also have Partners tab that allows you to see all the official partners or companies that are part of a Works With program. We have ESP Home and we probably all know what ESP Home does. You don't need to use Asmota here. It allows you to easily program and add devices to Home Assistant. Of course, we are here talking about the ESP32, A266 or similar devices. Then we have Helton company that is producing Z-Wave compatible products and they are part of the Works with Home Assistant, works via Z-Wave. This not only means that devices are available or supported in Home Assistant, but it means also that you can push or pull the updates or firmware updates to the devices directly from within Home Assistant. HomeSeer is the next company and they are producing Z-Wave products that are now available directly in Home Assistant, officially supported and once again firmwares can be updated directly from within Home Assistant. Home Wizard, also part of this partnership program, allows you to locally pull data from the support devices. You have ability to get what you would normally get from the cloud directly locally inside your Home Assistant. Jasco or Yasco is the company producing once again Z-Wave products. Again, part of the partner program works with Home Assistant. 
Leviton once again company producing Z-Wave products, again officially supported and it also allows you to update devices from within Home Assistant. Third Reality is also part of this program and it allows you to hook up their products directly in Home Assistant via the Zigbee network. And Ultralock is the last company that is officially supported. This is a company again producing Z-Wave devices that are now available and can be used directly inside Home Assistant via the official integration. But besides those companies that have official works with Home Assistant badge, there are also some other companies that are directly or indirectly supporting Home Assistant. For example, Silicon Labs is one of them. They've seen a big potential in Home Assistant community and they decided to support Home Assistant, their Sky Connect device, but also the yellow that has embedded Zigbee controller and they are working closely with uh, Home Assistant developers to improve the support and also bring additional functionality and improvements to overall community. And not just something that at the end will be used in Home Assistant, but maybe something that will be used overall for their supported chips. Next company that has to be mentioned is GitHub. The cost of running Home Assistant development, all the environments, everything would be really high. And that increased cost would have additional burden on Home Assistant and Nabucasa to support development and releases of Home Assistant. This direct, but also not direct, support from GitHub is what makes it easier for the devs to develop and also release new versions. Then we have Netlify that is hosting or providing hosting for the web services or website for Home Assistant. The cost of those services for such a large community as Home Assistant has would be really, really big. And by having this support, it allows the money that should normally go to web hosting to go somewhere else, in this case, in the developers, new services, new idea and a better Home Assistant. Plus, we have Localize. And Localize is yeah, helping Home Assistant translate and make this product available in all the supported languages. Plus, if you know of a language that is not supported and you're speaking it, maybe native speaker, you can help to translate it and have it also working in your own local language or a dialect. At first, those costs for the GitHub, Netlify, and Localize may not seem a big thing, but they are big when you have more than half a million official users according to the available analytics data from the January 2024. So we must thank those companies for supporting us by supporting Home Assistant and Nabucasa. But the list of companies or people that are supporting Home Assistant, open source and other projects doesn't stop with the official support from the companies themselves. For example, there are people working for some companies that invest their time, and their money to improve the integrations. And while those supports are not official supports from this and that company, they are support from people working on those same products in those same companies. There are a couple companies I will mention. This is not the comprehensive list, just a couple of them. For example, Axis, Tiber and Google. Their employees are working and improving the integrations for those products in Home Assistant. And while this is not done officially through the corporate channels or whatever, this is done by the same people that are actually working on those products at that same companies. And that means that we must also say thanks to those people that are investing their time and effort to make a better experience for their companies inside the integrations for Home Assistant. There are companies that at the end will make a right choice. And that right choice is a choice that supports us as the end customers. But you yourself can help both Home Assistant, companies that respect open source, companies that respect the time and effort people have put into integrations by buying products that work with Home Assistant and from companies that are not penalizing you as a customer, not selling your data somewhere or not blocking access to third parties when this third party is actually you. You are the only one that can break the habit of big corporations on seeing money whenever they see customer in front of them. And instead of asking what we can do to help you, they are asking how we can pull extra money out of your pocket. While I myself can have no impact on any corporation out there, we as a community, half a million or million of users or households that are using Home Assistant can have big impact by either recommending products that are open source, community and customer friendly, 
or saying don't buy for the products that don't see us as people but instead see us as cash cows. I really would like to hear your opinion and what are the companies that you would recommend or some companies that you wouldn't recommend never but I've failed to mention in this video. So don't forget leave me a comment down in the comment section below. If you did like this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And before I end up the video, I would like to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, shared or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Plus, there is always option of doing super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.